kind of how things hit. And then, and then you don't spend a lot of time in, the, in this first phase in January as the calendar starts a meeting um, before it goes into a contact period. And so as soon as we got here, we quickly uh, put our phase one into it in our evaluation process and uh, hit the road running. And um, we didn't spend a lot of time together on the road for weeks at a time and, and come back on the weekends and try to close it out with three weekends. And uh, these guys have done amazing. I mean, the guys that, the, the guys that have gone through, and the guys that we've had to uh, go through and, and talk about and see and um, everything they've had to do has been amazing from top to bottom. And, and, and there's so many people involved. Um, from, from front office to, to support staff to video to um, all the way down the line, Peter Hansen and Danny Langsdorf and Matt Leach and, and Sarah Doty and, and equipment and video and, and I could name all of them, Kenwick Thompson. And, I mean, you, you could go the laundry list of people, which I'll, I'm going to take some time to do here later, um, and, and from Jordan to Scott to Trey to Damon to Nate to Charlie to Matt File to Damon to Brandon to Joe uh, to Ashley to Amberly. The reason I say all those things – that's how many people it takes to put something like this together and to do that in a short time. They, these guys have been amazing, man. Um, they really have. They've been professionals. They're veterans. Uh, I said I want to put together a varsity group to go out there and attack, and uh, they did. Coach, we obviously got a lot to get to, and we're going to get into the recruits here in just a moment. We want to talk about and show off a little bit of the recruiting tool that has gotten some of those recruits here. Everybody knows about Allegiant Stadium. Rebel fans, make sure you place those deposits on season tickets for next year. Make sure you do that and do it soon. But first, we need to talk about the Fertitta Football Complex, just nearly $35 million facility. And I thought, you know, what's the best way we can show off this brand new facility and what the recruits will be, be participating in, what they're going to be having their college careers here. So I decided to get a couple guys, Mackay Stevens and Charles Williams, give us a little tour of the Fertitta Football Complex. What's up, y'all? Senior wide receiver Mackay Stevenson, number two. What's up, Charles Williams, running back, senior number eight, and we're gonna take you on a tour to the Fatita Football Complex. Let's do it. Come on. All right, here we are with the Fremont Cannon. You see it's all red because we went in battle against them boys in Reno. So over here, you know, we got three different color helmets. We got black, red, and gray. A little bit over here, which is my favorite. We got the uh, red and the white, and then we got the uh, white bottoms too, and then uh, you gotta add the red shoelaces. Red shoelaces, man. I guess, you gotta slide it out. All right, now we're gonna show y'all the baddest weight room in the Mountain West. Let's do it. All right. So you can see all the different machines and everything that you need. You got treadmills, you got the bench press, squat racks, and everything. But I think the, the best thing in here is the scenery. It's just like being on the practice field, you got the view of the strip that makes you, you know, really wanna go hard. It's like you can see your future and where you could be at. And then, you know, coaches is right here where they can see everything, make sure, you know, if anything happens or, you know, you need some help, they can come right away. All right, now we're about to show you what we do on our free time in the George Malouse Players Club, two TVs, and then another two over there. You got your Xbox, your PS4. If you got pool table skills, I'm not talking about eight ball on the iOS game. I'm talking about real pool. I want to see it right here. Welcome to the barbershop. Come in here and get a clean chop for my boy Marcus Phillips. Locker room. Mm-hmm. Man, y'all not ready. Come on, come on. Place to be. See right here, we got the Rebels right here. Nice. That's nice right there. When I when I walked in, that's the first thing I seen. So right here, you got the uh, state flag, where you from. Mm -hmm. Then you got your name. And then you got the Las Vegas uh, sign and everything. All right, welcome to the Anstead Academic Center. We got David Wedley in there making sure we get right on our academics. If this is the auditorium, this is where we break down film. This is a chance for the team to come together, be together all at once. All right, now for my favorite place to be, my safe haven, the Madrigrano Family Training and Sports Medicine Center. We decked out UNLV logos, nice cushion seats. This is where you get taped up, stretched out, and everything before practice. Now, this place is probably everybody else's favorite place to come to right after practice, the hydrotherapy room. So we can take a look. We got three tubs. We got a cold tub, hot tub, then one with a treadmill and everything that you can get some real therapy work in. Woo, it's about time to eat. Y'all want to check this out? I'm starving. Over here, we eating healthy, real vegetables, baked potatoes. Here you got your fruit, butter, and then your bread and your muffins. You got your drinks and stuff over there. I'm telling you, this is the key to your day. All right, it was fun taking y'all on a tour of the Fertitta Football Complex. See you next time. Thank you for coming, like you said, and we'll see you soon. Go Rebels. Go Rebels.
And we are back live here at UNLV Football Signing Day Live 2020. Big thanks to Makai and Charles for that fantastic tour of the Fertitta Football Complex. But we need to get into the recruits. Tony Cordasco and defensive coordinator for the UNLV Rebels, Peter Hansen. Coach, you're a Bay Area guy. <laughs> you spent most of your career, if not all of it, up there. What made you come here to Las Vegas? Um, I think, first of all, is Coach Arroyo. Uh, knowing him for about 15 years, mm -hmm. give or take a, a year or two there, and um, knowing his energy, his juice, and then following him. Never worked together, but following him and knowing what he's done in his career, it's, it's almost a no-brainer to come work for him. All right, Coach Chanson, let's get right into these recruits. We're going to start with the local guy, the Bishop Gorman guy, Adam Plant Jr. I bet this kid's excited to be back home. He's excited to be back home, and we're excited to have him home. Um, obviously a long guy, 6'5", 250, plenty of uh, growth potential too as well. Um, you look at some of these plays, the athleticism he has for his position, the length, the strength he has on some of these tackles, just ragdolling guys. Um, it's exciting for us to, to see somebody – of this size and caliber uh, coming to us. Coach, uh, he will have three years of eligibility left. He played at Bishop Gorman High School here locally, was a four-star. He has those measurables you speak of. What would you like to see him improve in? Uh, just the overall violence, the hand strike. He's going to be playing uh, early on a little more of the inside techniques there. So, um, you know, playing against bigger bodies, more head up, um, and more, you know, more combinations that he's got to deal with that are going to be new for him. So learning a little bit of a new spot, um, you know, will, will be uh, what he's focused on. Next up, we got Daniel Coloca, big interior D lineman out of California. What's he bringing to the program? Uh, he brings size. We need, we need a D lineman going from a 4-3 to a 3-4. Um, some, some of the guys that were listed as D lineman are becoming outside linebackers. So we needed to add bodies like his to this class. You look at his quickness you look at his hand violence here on some of these plays and that's a big man running right there um, so the effort you see is, is big and he's a high school wrestler as well so um, you know that one-on-one -on -one mentality the uh, you know me and you and and who's going to win mentality is is huge that comes and translates from that sport yeah and he's a Raiders fan too and he's a Ra he's a huge Raiders, <laughs> fan. Huge yes. Raiders, Whole Raiders fan yeah and he grew and he bulked up from 280 now to two, about 295 or so uh, played offensive and defensive line uh, you see him as a tackle again yeah see him as a defensive tackle he could he could slide into that nose position as well a lot of wrestlers become uh, guys that can play in the nose as well yeah, you have a guy, a lot of guys on this team that have a lot of length, a lot more, I think, than we've ever seen in this program. Yeah, I think you look at this whole class, you can look at wingspans of a lot of these guys. Whether the height says it or not, the wingspan says length, 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 all over the D-line, the outside linebackers as well. Some of the secondary guys have some length too. Coach, the next guy we're going to talk about, Jalen Dixon. This is a kid coming out of O'Day High School up in Seattle, a powerhouse high school up in Washington. That's a, that's a good quality of competition that he brings here to Las Vegas. Exactly right. And that's recruiting-wise, that's one of the things you're, you're always asking. I mean, there's so many aspects. And who's he playing against? And is he succeeding against those guys? So being a powerhouse program with great competition is huge. He's one of those rare guys that, you know, may not, may not fit the measurables, but um, the effort, the, uh, the motor. And then you look at some of this violence. He's ragdolling that kid and um, – it's fun to watch some of his highlights. Yeah, I like how he gets off of his blocks, Coach. Very strong. And he was the top pass rusher on that squad, too. Exactly right. I mean, we need guys to go hit the quarterback. It makes everybody better when you're hitting the quarterback. The ball starts hitting the ground when you hit the quarterback. Um, so when you're looking at film and guys are hitting the quarterback over and over again, we like that. You, uh, you earned some air miles on this next kid, Alvin Johnson, <laughs> going to Louisiana. Uh, what's he bringing to the program? What sets him apart, I guess, on that D-line? Okay, you're going to see some length with him as well. I know that's a – we keep saying that over and over again. Um, but he's, he's a long guy, 6'4". Um, when we first talked, he was in the, you know, 255 range. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, he's 270-something. So um, he's obviously got growth potential. And a lot of these highlights, you're seeing a big man running again. Um, he's chasing little guys down. He's uh, getting off the ball with quickness. And that length can, can save everybody. You can keep yourself unblocked when you have long arms like he does. I like, Look, that, yeah. I like that you beat some pretty big schools here. He was committed to Baylor, and then he reopened his recruitment back in November. Exactly right. We'll take it. We will take it because this guy um, is the prototype looking 
uh, defensive tackle for us. All right, next up we got Waisali Muavesi. That's a fun name to say. It is. It is. <laughs> Out of Provo, Utah. I mean, what what is – again, I, I ask these questions, what sets them apart? I, I, the – the pattern I'm seeing is length and, and drive and, and quality of competition. Exactly right. Um, you know, coming from Stanford, we've recruited this area as well, obviously. And uh, But you said it, length. He's got an 80-inch wingspan. Okay, He's got longer arms than I do, more <laughs> wingspan than I do. Um, so it really doesn't matter that he's 6'2", and 6'2 is fine, but his wingspan is 6'8". So um, we're excited about that. Here's another guy that hits the quarterback. His get-off is excellent. Um, his lateral quickness, you see some, some movement laterally with him as well on these clips. Um, so there's, you know, the athleticism, uh, the wrestling background, and obviously the arm length is all huge. And he's just really well coached, as you could see. Coach, you have so many of these players that are two-sport athletes, too. And there's just a tremendous amount of athleticism with this year's class. Uh, another guy, too, who uh, bull rushes the offensive lineman. Exactly right. And, and you can bull rush them when they're not ready to be hit. So he's getting off the ball quicker than those guys. And you said it with two sport athletes. I mean, they're developing skills that, that a lot of people don't even know translates to the football field when they're playing other sports. Peter Hansen, defensive coordinator for the UNLV Rebels. I want to hit that second level of the defense now. Kui Olotoa, he enrolled in January. He's here on campus. What did you like about him when you were recruiting him? And how much more do you like him even now being here on campus? So I met Kui about a day and a half after I got here um, on that weekend visit. And uh, he's a guy that, first of all, he's a champion, uh, junior college champion. Um, so playing uh, undefeated football his most recent season. Um, and then you see the quickness, the get off. Another guy hitting the quarterback a lot off the edge. You also see on this clip, uh, he's playing off the ball. He's, he's got some versatility to his game. He's got some drop ability in his game. So um, versatility is another key word we look for on the defensive side to go along with that length and growth potential. Coach, are you going to be attacking a lot uh, from the edge this upcoming season in that 3-4? Uh, from the edge, for sure. Um, whether we're bringing four or five or more bodies, uh, the edge is always a huge aspect as far as going to hit the quarterback and set the edge. Uh, transitioning now to a guy that has been the apple of many people's eye, LaShawn Bell. Last night when I looked up, he had 11 offers. I can only imagine that probably increased <laughs> over the middle of the night. This one was, was a tough get, but he, he's coming to Las Vegas. Absolutely tough get, and we're absolutely ecstatic to get him. Um, he's kind of that prototype outside linebacker, and um, you see these clips, and we talked about some of his favorite players in the NFL, and um, it, it translates. And you see why he, his favorite player is like a Von Miller or a, a Khalil Mack, something like that. Um, he's coming off the edge. He's doing a lot of the things that those guys do, obviously at different levels. And, and now we're going to come to a new level. But, again, prototype size, um, speed, quickness. You see the flexibility with him coming off the edge, really bending, dipping shoulders. Um, and there's some more speed right there. So he's exciting, absolutely. You know what opened up my eyes, Coach? I watched video from the game against John Bosco. You're playing a powerhouse team, and he was dominant in that game. Exactly right. And, again, we bring that up. Um, who are you playing and how are you playing against those elite uh, competitors? Let's talk about another Cali kid, a, a very big kid, linebacker, 6'4", 215, Ose Igbase. Boy, that, that's an intimidating yes. thing stat right there. Exactly right. Again, we're hitting things. We're hitting length. We're hitting flexibility. Um, we're hitting edge rushers. And uh, we, really, we really need to credit Coach Thompson and Coach Baumgartner with, these, with, with Osei because they, they did, went the extra mile to decide, okay, he's the guy we want as far as this spot that was available. So um, going the extra mile to, to crunch more video and, and, and get to know um, the, the prospects here. And he's the one we really wanted, and he's the one we're so excited about. And you see all this length, and, and you see a guy that loves to play. You see a guy that, um, you know, doesn't necessarily have choreographed celebrations, but he loves to play. <laughs> you know what I mean? He gets up excited about what he just did. And, Coach, uh, I spoke to head coach Damian Porter uh, there at uh, Crespi High School there in Encino, and uh, he was just telling me that uh, I guess a lot of schools backed off junior year, a non-surgical knee injury, and then he started to blossom right after that. Is this a guy that will put his hand to the ground in the 4-3? Uh, he did in the 4-3. Will he do right. the same in the 
Uh, he'll be more of a stand-up guy in the 3-4, and then uh, we get into our sub packages. He could get his hand in the ground potentially. A lot of these outside backers have that versatility to do both. So he's, he's one of those guys that can definitely do both. Next up, we got Prince Lawler Jr., and this is a, another linebacker, but this is also an athlete that you guys have recruited. No question. Uh, you look at his size, 6'2", 240, and you look at his film, and all of that 240 shows up, I think, in every tackle. I mean, he is a strong tackler. He's a striker. Um, and, and then you look at his athletic ability. Can he run and chase down uh, smaller, faster guys? And it's, it's almost over and over again. Uh, I know I keep saying that, but uh, that's what we like. We got, you got to be able to do stuff repeatedly and do it well repeatedly. Um, and then you look at him take on O-linemen and run through traffic. And he's violent. He's physical um, to go along with his athleticism. Yeah, a lot of hard hitting going on in that video. They used him a lot at Hutch, uh, basically blitzing the quarterback. So uh, pretty much, you know, with that high motor, he could come off the edge too and then attack the quarterback. I like when you talk about violence, Coach, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we need it on our side of the ball. You know, they say everything's uh, bigger in Texas, and so is this next recruit, Brennan Scott. I know every recruit is important, but this is the highest-ranked high school recruit in program history. To say you're excited, I would imagine, is an understatement. Absolutely. We are, we are again, ecstatic to, to have this guy coming to us. He is a player that uh, both Coach Arroyo and myself knew from our previous stops. Um, so to be on those boards is obviously exciting to us. And a versatility, again, and violence, again, are, are things you're seeing on this, on this video. You see him on the ball coming off the edge. You see him off the ball uh, reacting to what's going on in front of him. And then you just see him knock guys backwards. You see him chase him down. Um, again, a lot of what we talked about with Prince and a lot of what we talked about with these the uh, Ed Rusher types. I mean, you see him hitting the quarterback as much as anybody. Now he's putting his hand in the dirt against an offensive tackle. So the physicality, the versatility is exciting with him. Coach Delone Williams, the head coach at Bishop Don, was telling me a story. He said that uh, Brennan Scott came in thinking that he was a running back. He said in a JV game, they moved him to defensive end. He had five or six sacks, and that was it. So a defensive uh, player now. Exactly right. And, and uh, if the first game you're going to hit the quarterback, then there's, there's something to build on there. All right, let's hit that, that third part of the, of the defense. Let's talk about the secondary. Let's talk about some ball hawks that we have here. Jeremiah Houston, cornerback out of Long Beach. Okay, so you're going to see a speed guy here, another versatile guy, and another long guy, a secondary long guy. So um, a lot of these clips are actually at corner. And, uh, you know, so you're seeing some good ball skills. You're seeing arm length, and you're seeing him run with whoever's lined up against him. And this is a kid that was uh, actually, he's familiar to this area because he was coming to UNLV last year, uh, some issues with his transcripts and was one class short. And so now he's part of this recruiting class coach. And I really like him because he's really good in press coverage. Exactly right. And um, you just, you just, the more guys you can have in press coverage, the more you can do with your, your scheme. Um, and he can, he could play on, he can play off as well. There's a clip right here where you can see him potentially playing multiple positions, whether it be nickel, safety, corner, everything on that last play. So, um, you know, the versatility and the speed are really exciting with him. And he, he's a team first guy. Uh, when we had him on the visit, I mean, he was getting around the other recruits. He was getting around us coaches and just really, um, you know, a, a guy that we want to be around. So that, that says, uh, I could say that a lot about a lot of these guys. Coach, when we look at these recruits and we look at the measurables, you know, we can get caught up in the numbers a lot. But this next guy, Ricky Johnson, maybe not the biggest DB in the country, but you talk about quality of competition in the, the great state of Texas. I mean, this kid brings it. Exactly right. We've mentioned quality of competition with a couple of these other guys. So obviously um, something that we recognized here. Um, you say not the biggest yet. OK, <laughs> another guy with growth potential. He is he is a long player. You see that on that first clip. He's taller than both of those guys and he's getting higher than both of those guys. Um, ball skills are something we really see with this guy. And again, uh, beating a dead horse a little bit, but he is versatile. He could play multiple positions on our defense. Has a good nose for the football from everything that I saw, Coach. Uh, tremendous cl uh, closing speed. And is this another guy that uh, you think we, we might be seeing on special teams this season? No question. And, and we say that, and we, 
we're going to get to a couple of these clips where there's definitely some nasty to his game, um, where he's blocking guys as a receiver or tackling the guy on the edge right here coming up. So obvious translation to special teams right there. See, just another example of why you just don't get caught up in the numbers. you got to look at the tape. you got to see what this kid can do. When you look at his athleticism, it obviously sets it apart from everybody else. Let's talk about Tyson Player, another pl guy you had to get some frequent air miles <laughs> to, oh. to go visit out in South Carolina. Exactly right. Um, you know, long-distance guy, but uh, somebody that came here and, and just really embraced the atmosphere, the culture that uh, we want to get built here um, and, and really uh, – bought in early as far as that goes in the recruiting part of things. Um, you know, again, I've said versatility over and over again. He is another guy that can play five or six positions in the secondary, um, depending on how many guys we have out there. So, um, you know, a guy with great ball skills, a guy with a lot of high school success. You look at all his tackles and interceptions, and the ball seems to find him. Um, and, and level of competition as well. He's playing against good players. On, on all these clips right here. So uh, he keeps coming away with the ball. So that is hugely important and exciting. And now he's going to get physical. And violent. And violent. <laughs> and violent. <laughs> he had a couple of dozen offers. Uh, I know the service academies were heavy on him. Tennessee early on expressed uh, some interest. And what I like about him too, Coach, you talk about that athleticism. But after the interception, you see that he could run with the football. Exactly right. In the, and then we we're talking about translating to special teams a little bit. I think that's something that translates as well. Um, but you see some of the change of direction uh, possibilities with him with the ball in his hands as well. If we can put points on the board on our side of the ball, everybody's happy. Bringing things closer to the left coast now, Noel Williams out of California, another Cali kid. This kid had uh, a few offers as well, some big time offers as well. Absolutely. And, and he's another guy that uh, we, can, we can look at uh, other sports. Okay, 6'4", high jumper, okay, um, length again. Uh, a six-foot corner is a long corner oftentimes, okay, and then um, physical tackler, instinctive player. Um, so you're going to see some clips where he might have two guys in his vision and he's reacting off the uh, entire picture, not just tunnel vision. Um, so that's, that's uh, hugely important in our defense, and uh, we're excited to have him as well. A very big play guy, and UNLV's defense needs those big plays, turn the ball over, return to pickoff for 100 yards against Newberry High School. Uh, I saw where he jumped another route, had a 95-yard return. Uh, again, very athletic coach, and that ability, again, after the interception, to put your team, the offense, in, in a very good place. Exactly right. It's our job to get the offense the ball back. Hopefully it's close to the end, to the end zone for them to score quickly. All right, we, we've been, talking, we've been <laughs> talking a little bit about special teams, but let's talk about the punter. Punters yeah. are people too, Coach. I know <laughs> you, you're, you're a fan of that. Charlton Butt, the Aussie, the kid down under, he's got a big old boot, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Um, first of all, you look at his size, so you know there's some power behind his mm -hmm. kick, okay? And then um, uh, just the tradition of Australian punters is, has been developed over the past probably 20 years um, and he, he falls right into that category. You see the ball is disappearing on our video right here, uh, but he's going to be accurate as well. He's going to put the ball and help our defense by uh, pinning that ball inside the 20 um, with his accurate kicks. He's got a variety of you know, kick angles and things like that. Um, so absolutely huge ceiling for, for this guy. And a guy who's 6'2", 205, he has that uh, NFL measurable coach. And He's more of a conventional punter. When we heard he was from Australia, we were curious if he would be like the rugby-style punter. Exactly. Um, but that massive leg swing, I think, leads to him being a little more of a traditional guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to, to get that thing going, you don't necessarily need to run around uh, for that. I'm sure he's got that skill. I'm sure that's something he's done in his life as far as running around and kicking it. Um, but, again, massive leg, huge ceiling, and, and an accurate leg as well. All right, Coach. Well, before we let you go, we just went through 15 guys, and these are the words that jumped out the most. Versatile, violent, culture, and quality of competition. How pleased are you with this group as a whole and just in terms of making that transition and, and changing the culture with this group, with this program? Uh, extremely pleased with this group and, and uh, excited to get going with these guys. And um, we feel like they're the right guys that are going to want to come in and compete and, and come in and buy in and come in and, and – uh, be beyond the group that sets the, the new culture around here. So 
Um, we're excited about these guys. They, they fit in together when we've been around them. They fit into the program that we want. And, um, you know, the measurables we've talked about, the, the film we've talked about, um, but the excitement of them coming in and competing right away um, in the Mountain West conferences is, is uh, exactly what we want, I think. Peter Hansen, UNLV Rebels defensive coordinator coach. Congratulations again. We're going to take one quick break, one quick break, and when we return, we're going to talk to quarterbacks coach Danny Langsdorf. We're going to hear from Marcus Royal later on in the show. We're going to talk offense after the break. Place those deposits down, Rebel fans, on your season tickets for next year at Allegiant Stadium. You do not want to miss UNLVTickets.com, 702-739 fans. We'll be right back. What does it mean to be a Rebel? It means seizing an opportunity to lead a team in the world's greatest city and to be part of a community with contagious enthusiasm and passion. Being a Rebel means rolling up our sleeves and getting to work. It's forging a future built on toughness, grit, and accountability. Rebels work hard to prove people wrong and know that to build a lasting program, it takes us all Rebel strong. A Rebel is me, a Rebel is you, a Rebel is us. Be a rebel. A rebel nation, we will win. We we're recruited at a really high level. The goal is to compete for championships. The enthusiasm and passion of this community is contagious right now. It drew me to this job. Build a winner, a winner that will last. Welcome back to UNLV Football Signing Day 2020 Live. Vince Sapienza back here at the Fertitta Football Com Complex on the campus of UNLV. We are talking signing day. We just got through the defense. Now let's talk about the offense. The guys who are going to score the majority of these touchdowns. Tony Cordasco, longtime UNLV broadcaster and the passing coach. Passing coordinator, the quarterbacks coach, Danny Langsford. Coach, you have experience in the Mountain West. You have experience with head coach Marcus Royal up in Oregon. How excited are you for this opportunity here in Las Vegas? Yeah, very excited. This is a, a good group that we've put together. I feel great about the, the uh, our staff, our uh, roster. Um, really a good signing day. Excited about getting going. All right. I know you've been. I know it's been a long night. So we're going to get right into the recruits. I'm going to start with a big guy, Justin Rogers, quarterback, TCU transfer, the highest rated transfer, highest rated recruit in UNLV program history. Part of the record breaking day. I mean, can you gush enough about this kid? Really excited about him. He's got a big frame, big strong kid. Um, you can see on the clips. He's was very very highly recruited out of high school. Um, you know, we hadn't played a ton, um, but we are very fortunate to get him uh, out of TCU and, and look forward to, to working with him uh, coming this spring. Coach, he was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. He was either the number two or the number three dual-threat quarterback behind Justin Fields, behind Dorian Thompson-Robinson. And uh, I guess there's, you know, a, a lot of anticipation to have him on this campus. What does he do well? I, I know that he has a tremendous arm. He could beat you with his arm and his legs, but uh, where do you see growth potential? Well, I think just game experience, you know, just playing uh, in, in, the, in the real games. You know, he, he's done a, a great job through his high school career being able to run, being able to make all the throws. 
Uh, he's an accurate thrower. He's a very mature kid that, uh, you know, when we met with him, when he was on his visit, um, you, you could really see he was into football, uh, had a great demeanor about him. Uh, he's serious, and he's, and he's ready to get to work. All right, I know as a quarterbacks coach, you probably cannot have too many quarterbacks in the coaching room. Let's talk about this next kid, Doug Brumfield, a pro-style quarterback out of California. Again, we talk about quality of competition. It's a common theme we've seen here with these recruits. What is he bringing? What do you like about him? Yeah, he's had a ton, a ton of production. Uh, I think he had uh, 38 touchdowns in high school, threw for over 6,000 yards. He rushed for a couple thousand in there. Um, you know, he, he's in a great program. Uh, has played a lot of football for, for Sarah. Um, excited about his size, his mobility. Uh, he, you know, he's a pro-style kid, but he, he moves pretty well, too. He's not, uh, you know, they, they designate that pro-style. And, and nowadays, uh, that dual threat, I'm, I'm not sure the difference between the two, but the, the kid is athletic. Uh, he's got a big arm, makes a bunch of plays running around. So we're, we're excited about his growth and getting him here and, and getting him uh, – you know, to learn our system and, and to be uh, part of the quarterback room. And with those long strides, he has drawn comparisons to Randall Cunningham, obviously, who played here at UNLV. <laughs> I like his poise. We watched him a lot on TV. A lot of his games were televised here, Coach, uh, this past season. I like his poise in the pocket. I like the way he doesn't ever seem rushed or panicked. Yeah, he's, he's got a good demeanor about him. Um, really a nice kid. And, and it, like, you know, we talked about playing, played a lot of football there, Sarah. Um, so he's got great production in high school, and, and we expect that to continue on in his college career. Let's talk running game now. Dylan Downing, sixth-ranked running back out of the state of Indiana. Seems like a really quick, fast, explosive kid. Yeah, we tried to uh, look for some, some size um, and, and speed at that position. I think we got two kids that, that fit the bill. Um, you know, Dylan's a big, strong, hard-running uh, back. He's a downhill um, rusher. He's he's had you know 12 touchdowns in his senior year. He rushed for over a thousand yards. He's a really good student. Great kid. We're excited about him. He's he's already off to a great start in the weight room. He uh, played pretty much in the read option system right there uh, in high school in Indiana. Uh, a kid like this uh, has a chip on their shoulder because. I know that he expected like some big time schools to offer like Wisconsin and other big schools that he visited. Uh, do you like kids that have a chip on their shoulder? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, I think that, that, that makes you a tougher team. I think you've got uh, kids that are hungry and, and really want to come and, and prove people wrong. So I, I think that's a, a, a great trait to have for our team. I know you were excited about the two running backs that you brought in, but no two running backs, as you know, are alike. So what does Spencer Briggs the back out of Tennessee kind of bring that that may be different but just as could be as productive here at UNLV yeah he's a hard runner too they're a little different style um, he, he's not as big as Dylan uh, but not not by much he's a little lighter but probably quicker um, had a bunch of uh, rushing yards as a senior kind of a breakout season um, you know was runner up to Mr. Football in Tennessee I mean they, they guy the guy's an explosive uh, touchdown maker so again another kid that we really uh, we're excited about watching his film and, and seeing his production his senior year. Coach, he has a uh, second gear, right? Uh, Spencer Briggs, acceleration in the open field, a good vision I saw, I noticed, and, and really good balance, uh, kind of a compact guy and low to the ground. He, that's exactly right. Um, I think he, he can uh, have the ability to make a guy miss but also run somebody over too. He's, he's got both uh, dimensions in his game. Let's talk wideouts, the, the divas of the, the football team, if you will. <laughs> I don't know if that's appropriate uh, in this day and age, but Zyle Griffin, you talk about quality competition, Evergreen High School up in Washington. He sees a lot of it, uh, and everything you read on this kid is, is athlete. Absolutely. He um, watched him play last week, uh, had, had three thunderous dunks, and <laughs> two of them were made. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he's a kid that's explosive. Uh, he's got good size, good range. Uh, you know, we like those basketball players, too, because they, they, they know how to get open and, and, and use the space on the field. Um, a lot of production from him. That's a good conference. That's good. That Southern Washington football is tough. They've, mm -hmm. they've had a state champion out of that area, um, you know, last couple of years. So it's good football, and uh, we're excited about him. He, he does a lot of good things uh, through the film we, that we uh, evaluated early and got on him right away. Yeah, they moved him a lot around in the formation. I saw him used as a tailback, as a wing. 
Uh, they do whatever they can, and he will go up and get the football. He's got great hands, and then also his yards after the catch, his yak is exceptional. Yeah, he played running back too, and he punted a little bit, if you can believe that. So uh, they used we him have a, a lot. We a backup of, punter. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they used him a lot of different ways, and um, that will help us uh, with the experience that he's had playing in the slot, playing outside, uh, handling the ball. I think all those things will be really good for us. Do you talk to him about the dunk that he didn't make? Yeah, I actually have it on tape. <laughs> okay. so. And he's also uh, a track guy. We yeah. <laughs> We're going to need that ASAP. But we'll mm -hmm. move on to Calvin Souders, uh, another big kid out of Oregon that uh, could really pose some uh, matchup problems, hopefully. Yeah, he's a, he's a bigger kid. Um, you know, we had uh, kind of all shapes and sizes at the position. We had some smaller kids that can run. This, this, this receiver felt great about his uh, physicality. He's, he's a little bit longer. Uh, played a little bit in the slot, played outside. Um, I think he was second all-time in his, in his high school in receptions. Um, I know his coach really well. He's, he spoke very highly of, of this kid. He played defense. Uh, I think he had three interceptions and, and a bunch of tackles. So we love uh, his toughness. Uh, he's a detailed route runner, uh, goes up and gets the ball. I think he's going to be exciting. Yes, Coach Steve Pine, I had an opportunity to speak to him earlier this week, Coach, and he said that you were in on him at Sodders when you were at Fresno State, and then when you arrived here, his coach called you Pine and said, take, can you take another look at him? Because no one really recruited, and that, again, a guy that's going to have a chip on his shoulder is Sodders. Yeah, he was, um, you know, a teammate of a, of a, a national recruit. Um, I think he got uh, probably overlooked a little bit um, because of that, but had you know a great high school career, was really kind of flying under the radar. We we spent a lot of time the last couple of weeks looking at his film again and and seeing how he could be a fit. So I, I do think uh, we got a good one in that in in Souders. Works hard. You yeah. talk about all shapes and sizes at that wide receiver position, especially in this draft class. Kyle Williams kind of rounds out that shape, size, and speed type uh, that you were alluding to. Yeah, he is really dynamic. He's going to be a returner for us. Uh, I think he played quarterback, receiver, DB, you know, running back. He about played everything on the field besides the line. So um, I think you can see um, really his, his dynamic returning ability, uh, and, that, and that will carry over to, to running routes too. Excited about this kid. Um, went down to the wire and, and uh, had to work hard to get him, but uh, really excited about this group. From Santa Monica Catholic High School, had no stars. I'm sure that you're just so excited to develop a player like uh, Kyle Williams. Yeah, you know, the star deal, um, I, think, I think we trust our evaluation and, and um, haven't paid a, a ton of attention to that. I think it probably matters in the, in the rankings and everything, but um, we're trying to get uh, five-star players and, and I think develop them best we can. And I, I believe that we've got some kids that were probably under-recruited a little bit, but I think we're going to get a lot of production out of them and, and they will come with chips on their shoulders. Kyle Williams, you said he played just about every position but the whole line, but I bet if you asked him, he would do whatever he needed to do. Yeah, he's played quarterback, <laughs> so we'll get some reverse passes there in there for go. him. There we go. Let's uh, let's move on to the tight ends group. Kaleo Balloon Guy, this kid had nine offers as of last night. Again, who knows in the last 24 hours what transpired. You guys got him. Pac-12 offers, Mountain West offers, and I even saw Yale gave him offers. So this kid's smart, this kid's big, and this kid's an athlete. Yeah, I had a bunch of catches. Um, they used him um, – you know, in, in, t in tight in formations, they, they flexed them out. They moved them around, uh, had, had 40 uh, catches for, for 750 and, and I think eight touchdowns, uh, a real good basketball player. And, you, you know, with, when you're looking at tight ends, that, that basketball uh, ability is good because they, they know how to post up and get open. And um, we've, we've loved that about this kid. Uh, six, six is, is hard to find, especially that can run. And, uh, He's a he's a you know was an all league player. He's he's played some defensive end. He's he's really versatile and he's got a lot of ability and, and size that we're looking for. Coach Mike Kuhnlins says to say hi to you, Coach. Uh, before he took over at Tracy High School, uh, he said that they didn't even lift any weights, and so the quarterback had to deliver the football quick, and so that's why they had balloon guy in uh, more or less as an H back in a blocking scheme. But then we saw him in the slot. But then we saw him flanked out. And again, versatility. Yeah, I think that uh, his ability uh, to go up and get the ball with his size will be a strength. I think we're going to have to get him in line a little bit and, 
and uh, get some technique with blocking, but um, excited about his playmaking skills for sure. I mean, you're going to have some fun with this tight end group. Kaleo Balloon, guys, 6'6", 250, and then you got Alex Lines here out of Arizona, 6'5", 245. Yeah, we, we, we wanted those bookend tight ends, and, and uh, if we if we want to play big, we can do that. And, and both guys have been able to uh, make some plays in the passing game, uh, especially Kaleo uh, being flexed out as a receiver a lot. I think uh, that will be great. But you, you see Alex uh, in that H-back position or, or off tight end, and, and he's a guy that will be able to – um, you know, block across the formation. He'll be able to slip out in the in the passing game. I, I, I'm really excited about him. We had to work hard on this one. Um, you know, we we've had some battles with some schools, and and uh, you know, it worked out in our in our favor at the end, and we're very excited about it. Came in uh, late last night, and you know, he was tweeting out. He's very excited to be here. Uh, soft hands. He makes those one-handed grabs, Coach. You're going to have to teach him to use both hands. Bring it in. Yeah, it in. two hands for beginners, we'll call it. So, yeah, I think he's done a nice job making some plays, though. He's, he's in been traffic, able. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Size and speed, that's kind of the, the name of the game with, with those premium positions. But let's talk about the guys who, who make the offense go, the offensive line. We're going to start with Gemini Luta Ulu. That's good. Uh, that was that was all good. right? Was yeah. that all right? I've been yeah. practicing. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kid, again, we talk about, and again, it's a common theme, but this is just kind of the identity of, of your recruits, quality of competition, competition at Servite, another powerhouse in California. Yeah, he is. He's an athletic. Um, you know, he's, he's 300 plus. He's, he's a rugby player. He sings. He, he dances. He does everything. So he, he's an interesting uh, character, but uh, but really talented in a lot of different ways, and he's got a great smile. He's got a great personality, plays tough. Um, we're we're very excited, and a good another very good program that has trained him well. So we will will be able to get uh, his best every day. And he transferred from Modern Day to Servite. See the pancake blocks, and we also see just how quick his uh, his feet are. For a big guy. Yeah, he moves very well. I think um, uh, dancing and, and rugby has helped him uh, move around pretty well. Dancing and singing, is that part of the recruiting trip? You go he, check out? He danced He'll on the – He'll win the talent show, maybe. He, yeah, he, he will definitely win the rookie show. And he, he was dancing in the high roller one night, and uh, it was impressive. <laughs> so we're, we are excited about all of his talents. Uh, let's talk about another big kid. Uh, this one out of Alaska. Got to go up to the, to the frigid cold for this one. Alani Makaheli. What, what do you like about him? Again, I mean, there's a common theme between these linemen, which we'll get to in a bit, but what, is, what sets him apart? You know, they're, they're all tough, mauler type of guys, um, and they move well. We wanted guys that were athletic, uh, that had size, and, and I think that we got that in all of them. Um, they're all uh, not necessarily overly tall. We get to, you know, Tiger and, and Marcus will be a little bit taller. These guys uh, definitely have the power and the strength inside. Um, but also the ability to move. And I think with, with playing guard and, and, and pulling and getting them on the perimeter, I think it was very important to have some guys that could move. Uh, but we also got tough kids, and I, I think that you see that in their highlights, uh, finishing blocks. Um, you know, he's, he was the top lineman in the, in the state of Alaska, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Coach uh, Nor Norcross had to go up there and, and take some red eyes <laughs> to get him, but um, was, we're very excited about him. Not a lot of uh, visitors up there in Alaska, <laughs> so he had to go to a lot of summer camps, and he was here at the UNLV camp uh, last June, and uh, it's good when you beat out a lot of other big programs. I know BYU and Oregon had some late interest in him, and Hawaii, Idaho, and Montana State as well. Yeah, it's always good to get him on campus, however it is. You know, some of the kids come through camp or, or play in Gorman or, or, you know, for whatever reason, but if we can get him in, in, uh, onto our campus at some point, it's very helpful in recruiting. Let's move on to Marcus Miller now. Big boy, 6'4", 300 pounds out of California. Yeah, I played offense and defensive line. He's had a bunch of um, really good production, uh, beating up people up front. Uh, he was a wrestler. He's a track and field guy. He, you know, three-sport athlete is, is great, and you can see his athleticism moving around. Um, we love that he had production on defense, too. I think we've got a handful of two-way players in this, in this class, and I think that uh, – it shows their athleticism. It shows their ability to, to play a full game. Uh, they're in shape. You know, I think there's a lot of good things that come about playing both ways. A three-star beat out Reno, Hawaii, San Jose State. So uh, teams in the Mountain West Conference. And another physical offensive lineman. Uh, you recruited a lot of guys who just buried players across from them. They just bury them. 
yeah, I think that uh, you know finding those guys that can that can finish is big. And uh, you know, you obviously coach that and teach that, but when you see it on on high school film, it uh, makes it a lot easier uh, coming to us. All right, let's uh, move on to the uh, to the final member of this offensive recruiting class, maybe the best name of the bunch. With all due respect, Tiger Shanks, six five. 345 out of Oregon. You talk about measurables, you talk about a name. Tiger King Shanks, by the way. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he's a made the all name team for sure. He uh, was in another great program, uh, played for, for Coach Corey uh, out of Lake Oswego. They, had a, they were runner ups this year. I think they won, it, uh, won the state championship the year before, uh, but they're well coached and, and really. Knew about him a few years ago, uh, was at our camp at Oregon, and uh, Coach Arroyo and I had him there. And um, this kid has really devoted himself in the weight room. He's gotten stronger, um, actually has dropped a little bit of weight. And 50 a, pounds, Corey yeah, told me. Yeah, yeah, 50 pounds he's dropped. And, uh, again, you know, here's a guy uh, who's very physical, and he can advance and block on the second and third levels too. He can. He can get up to those uh, linebackers, and he's he's mean. Uh, you watch the tape. He he is uh, not friendly to the opponent, so <laughs> it's a good thing for us. Violence is a common theme we're seeing with this recruiting class. When you look at this overall offensive recruiting class, the words that I look at when, when you were talking explosive, you talk about versatile, you talk about maulers, you just talk about an exciting group that could – potentially make impact sooner rather than later. Yeah, we hope so. You know, anytime we, we bring in a class, we're expecting them to, to take some spots. And uh, if they don't, uh, at least at minimum compete. So we're trying to get some kids to come in and, and fight for those jobs and, and make our team better. Danny Langsdorf, UNLV Rebels quarterbacks coach, passing coordinator. Thank you so much, very much for taking Thanks, the coach. time. And uh, from one quarterback's coach to a former quarterback rebel, Caleb Herring, he uh, chatted with a few of the four rebels that are part of this recruiting class that are already here on campus. He has more with what they have to say about being part of this program. Thanks, guys. We're here at the Petita Football Complex in the beautiful weight room on the campus of UNLV. Caleb Herring here with a couple of the early enrollees for the UNLV football team 2020 season. Getting ready for the offseason right now. A couple of guys come and get to work. Adam Plant, Kui Olatoa, Jeremiah Houston, Dylan Downey. These recruits have come in early to get their show on the road as Rebels. They're excited to be Rebels and we're excited to have them here, obviously. Uh, some exciting things for them. With the early start, we'll start with you, Adam. Uh, your story, being a Vegas guy, graduated from Bishop Gorman, of course, TCU transferring back. What's it like for you coming back? Your home city. Uh, that's a good feeling coming back home. You know, I already won some national championships at Bishop Gorman. You know, I know what it feels like to be a champion. I know what the work it takes to be there. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to bringing that back here to you know, being in the city of Vegas. And I feel like this coaching staff with Coach Arroyo, I feel like we're off to the right track with doing it. Who hey, Moving on to you, man. You're coming from RCC. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm from Southern California too. So we got that connection, Riverside area. What's it like for you uh, coming to Vegas? The new excitement, the potential for the program. What's it like to you signing on to this team? I came. Uh, I just came off a undefeated season, 13 and 0 at RCC. So I know what it takes to win, and I'm super excited to bring that that leadership and winning mentality to UNLV and be under the big lights. I can't wait. I'm glad I, I got here early so I can get ready and reach my full potential. Jeremiah, moving on to you, Long Beach City College, another Southern California guy. What's it like for you to sign on to this Rebel program, and what do you see yourself in the future here? Um, it's very exciting, you know, I'm ready to get to work. You know, uh, start out of the year, you know, I uh, kept my head down, it's just work, you know. Uh, this is really what, this is something I really want to do, and, you know, I put my all into it, so I'm glad to be back, you know. Uh, now I'm just really, you know, let my feet hit the ground, just in this role, you know. Uh, I'm here because, like, you know, the coaching staff, you know, they welcome me. And, and with open arms, like Coach Trey, Coach Max, the DC, the head coach, you know, and they, they say that they want a guy that's gonna come here and lead and, and lead the way. And I feel like I'm that type of guy because all I do is really work. You know, and I'm ready, you know, to come in and just make an impact with the team and the community. And you talked about the hurdle that you had to, to go through to get here, your journey here, sitting out last year. What was it like to you to keep that focus, to keep that drive, kind of self-motivation to be ready to come and take this opportunity? Well, it started off when I was Young, you know, I had a dream of being a professional athlete. Uh, I played multiple sports, but my heart fell in love with football, and it carried me the whole way. Um, you know, and then when, when um, the situation had me where I had to sit out, 
You know, it took a toll on me, but I told myself, you know, if I really want it, I have to go get it. And my mentality is, you know, don't sit around just to play for something, go get it. If you really want it, go get it. You know, nothing's given, nothing's, you know, you gotta earn it. And in life, you know, you might go through, go through some things and you just gotta push through it, you know. My, my back was against the wall, and the only way was to just go forward and just dig and eat, you know, just really grind it out. And it lines up perfect as the program's moving forward, all those things, the, the trajectory's up for, for the program as well as you. So, obviously, excited to have you here. Dylan, you're making the longest trip. You, these guys from Southern California, you've got a hometown, Vegas. You're coming all the way from Indiana, Carmel High School in Indiana. You graduated high school early. What's it like for you on this journey, now starting as Rebel? I mean, it's far, but it felt like a second home when I got here for my official. Uh, they opened, they, they welcomed me with open arms, and the, the guys that Coach Royal brought in, it really has a uh, family feeling, so it was not a very hard transition. It felt like a second home. So meeting you and learning a little bit about you, you're a young guy, but you seem like you're about your business and you're ready to put the work in. Where'd you get that from? My mom, my dad, they both, uh, both like academics, so they're always pushing me to do do whatever I gotta do to get where I've uh, I've been I've wanted to go and this is where I wanted to go. So they, they were behind me and they supported me. I'm here. Sure everybody's excited to get their rebel careers underway. We're excited to have you. Obviously the Rebel family welcomes you as well as the rest of the signees that are signing here on National Signing Day to the Rebel family. We'll send it back up to you guys. Thank you, Thank Caleb, and welcome back to UNLV Football, football Signing Complex. Day Live 2020. Vince Sapienza here inside the Fertitta Football Complex on the campus of UNLV. And back rejoining me, Tony Cordasco and head football coach Marcus Arroyo. Coach, I want to take a look at the rankings as of this hour. Obviously, I know the rankings are always a fluid situation. This is according to 24-7 Sports. Right now, your Rebels ranked second in the Mountain West, but I must tell you that Rivals.com has UNLV at number one. Again, I know we get caught up in the numbers. I know we get caught up in everything. This is obviously still a fluid situation at this broadcast, but how proud, how excited are you to see that ranking uh, in your first uh, recruiting class? Well, I mean, I'm just excited to, as you guys just got into talking to uh, the, the two, two guys who uh, presented both those guys. That's what I'm most excited about is the staff and, and those guys. This class is amazing. Uh, but they're a byproduct of really the, the bigger vision that our staff's put together in regards mm -hmm. to being able to evaluate correctly, uh, put together a, a, a group that's, that's high in character, has great academics, has speed, athleticism, toughness, size and growth potential. I mean, that's, that's what fires me up is, is, is hitting and checking all those boxes in phase one because um, we bet on ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't sign anybody in that first, in that first period and, I'm sure there were a lot of people that were, that, including myself, that, that were, you know, uh, questioning if that was going to be the right move. You know, you make the right call, you go with it, and uh, you put the right guys behind you with the right foundation, the right community, and uh, the timing and the build and, and everything, the momentum uh, built up to, to doing whatever it may be that, that they want to uh, publish. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm elated about this, this staff, this group, this phase, and, and, and I'm excited to move forward. Coach, spring practice uh, will begin March 24th. What do you hope to accomplish with all these new faces here? Uh, spring ball is the next phase, uh, and it kind of is a little bit uh, – we've already got into kind of the, uh, the, the, the phase one in recruiting and the staffs, the, the most important part of what we had to do in these first 30 days. And then in the shadow of that now, that, that gets overlooked a lot of times, is our guys have been on discretionary workouts, and our weight room has been rolling here since we've been in class. So uh, Matt File and his staff, uh, Diamond, Brandon, and Haley – They've already got these guys uh, really setting the standard for culture. And in, 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 in this industry, um, that's where the hay's made. You know, that's where a lot of your discipline, your toughness, the way you move, bend, and the expectations get set before we get out between the lines. And so um, I've been really excited about hearing Matt every day come up and tell me about guys and, and, and certain things and how they're doing and how that phase is going. And so as you transition then into spring ball, I'm able to – we're able to put things in, in motion and, and put our process in, in place. And that's going to be a, um, a nice four-week deal, at th three, three, three practices a week, and uh, a chance for us to get better each one. And uh, I'm excited. Our, I know our staff is to make that transition after a little bit of a break here and maybe some <laughs> sleep. Yeah. Um, but that'll be fun. And, and spring ball is going to be that, that next stage that guys are going to get a chance to see the schematic part, and that's really – you know, that's that's what you're trying to do. You know, you're trying to go through talent acquisition, you're going through player development, and now you go to scheme implementation. And so that's the next piece of, of the pie. And I want to make sure we mention Matt File. You talk about your coaching staff, how excited 
you are about your coaching staff. You talk about excitement and bringing the heat. <laughs> you just have to look at Matt Files' social media yeah. and see how excited he is to get these guys in the weight room and to get them be a part of this Fertitta football complex. You got the Allegiant Stadium coming up in the fall, which I must mention, UNLVTickets.com. Place your deposits on season tickets. But just 50 bucks, too. Just 50 bucks. Yeah, but down. Get on board, baby. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. Let's it's train's it. rolling. <laughs> you talk about – we talk about, obviously, recruiting today. We talk about this complex, Allegiant Stadium, and everything that goes – goes with it. I know you didn't have a lot of time to recruit, but in terms of tools and what this program has to offer, the the future is bright here. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the the, the biggest reasons that, that we're all here is is the vision that, that um, you know, that me and my family saw. And then um, with obviously the support of, of uh, President Miana and, and Athletic Director Desiree Reed francois and her staff and her executive staff, and then you, comp you, you couple that with the community and this Fertitta family and this complex and, and all the people that put forth and, and building this amazing building. You act, you, then you move to the relationship at the, at, at, with the Raiders and, and what they're bringing, um, and then you pack it into this city, and th we're rolling, man. I mean, you can see this at the tip of the spear in a lot of ways, and uh, we're jumping on board. We're, we're just one of. Uh, it's a we, not me theory. It's going to take all of us. Um, and, and we're happy to be on it, man. It's, it's a really fun time, and you can see it. You can feel it. Um, and that's what I've been trying to impress on the team, really, is the fact that, that, that it should be something you can feel. You know, it should be something really organic that's going to last, and it can't be superficial. Nothing we're going to do is going to be superficial. Mm -hmm. It'll be blue-collar. It's going to be founded the right way. Uh, it started with recruiting. I think that everyone saw us do that the right way, and now it's uh, this next stage, and, and, and hopefully the, the community gets on board. excited about that because this is a having spent the last 30 days here it's here it's here and, and i can feel it i can feel the people i'm excited about it um my staff hasn't been here very much but they're feeling <laughs> it too um but it's 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome time momentum's there the building's there and the care is there and that's that's really what you need yeah and coach uh, you're going to do the caravan uh like we did with coach otzelberger that's coming up in may an opportunity to get out in neighborhoods here and drum up even some more uh, support for the program. Uh, social media is just going crazy right now. They are so excited about Rebel football. It's a level I think I've never seen before, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's flattering. It's humbling. It's uh, it's exciting. Um, our, we have a, a, you know we're, we we talk a lot about being a lot of humility in our program and understanding how excitement how exciting it is for us to just be part of it. And and we're just one piece. And uh, that excitement, hopefully, again, and, and not hopefully. Our goal is to make sure that excitement's organic. It's built the right way, built to stay, and I think that everything we do moving forward hopefully reflects that. And then uh, starting August the 29th, an arduous uh, schedule ahead for UNLV Rebel football this year. Four non-conference games, and in all, UNLV will face nine bowl teams. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's to go work. to work. Go back to work, right? <laughs> Let's go to work. Yeah. Head coach Marcus Arroyo. Tony Cordasco, for Caleb Herring, I'm Vince Sapienza, a record-breaking first recruiting class for you in this program, the highest-rated uh, transfer, the highest-rated recruit, the highest-rated high school recruit. It's a great start. I know this is just the baseline of more and more to come. Rebel fans, make sure you get your season tickets. Place your $50 deposit down on next year for Allegiant Stadium. Go to UNLVTickets.com, 702-739. Fans, thank you to all the UNLV staff who have helped make this recruiting day, the signing day, what it was. Once again, congratulations. Thank you so much. And we Thank will you see guys. you at Spring Ball on March 24th. A Rebel Nation, we will win. We recruited a really high level. goals to compete for championships. The enthusiasm and passion in this community is contagious right now. It drew me to this job. that will last.